Hey everyone. All right, so this video I want to talk about high frequency ventilation and pretty much kind of separate jet ventilation from oscillatory ventilation. Um, and I like charts to do that in my mind. It makes a firm division between the two. So before I actually start in the differences of the machine, I want to talk about why we use high frequency. We use it for two reasons, to prevent lung injury and to improve gas exchange. So let's talk about lung injury real quick. Lung injury is caused by three things. It's caused by barotrauma. We all know what that is, right? Delivering too much pressure to the lung. That pressure causes alveoli to rip, to tear. We have leaks, right? So pressure injury. We all know what barotrauma is. I don't think we all know what volume trauma is. So volume trauma is delivering too much volume which sometimes happens when you give too much pressure. But volume trauma is the stretching of the alveoli more than what they should. And when they stretch out too far, they don't go back to their natural shape. They get kind of baggy, okay? That's volume trauma, giving too much volume, stretching those alveoli to the point where their, their elastic recoil isn't, it doesn't come back to its original size. And then we have adelect trauma. Okay, trauma caused by atelectasis, and here's what that means. When you have a dot of atelectasis and that alveoli is completely collapsed, it takes a lot of pressure being delivered to that alveoli before it snaps open. And then it snaps open and it can ventilate, but then if you don't have peep set, that alveoli closes again, or if you don't have peep set correctly. And so then the next breath, there's a lot of pressure applied before it snaps open, and eventually every time it has to snap open, that pressure makes it snap open. Eventually, the little thin membrane, the AC membrane, is going to tear. Okay, that's atelect trauma. So, conventional ventilation is not a gentle form of ventilation, and it causes all three of those types of injury leading to injured lungs. So, when you have a premature infant, a, a micropremie, you don't want to cause injury to those little bitty underdeveloped lungs. That's a reason to go into, on to jet ventilation. Or if you've got a baby or an adult even that um, just their, their lungs are just trashed, right? They're already injured. You're maxed out on conventional ventilation. You don't have good gas exchange and you think, oh my gosh, let's just try high frequency. That's a rescue method okay and that rescue method hopefully is going to prevent further lung injury and help you exchange gases co2 and o2 so that's why we use it but there are two ways to do high frequency ventilation we can do high frequency jet ventilation with a jet ventilator or we can do high frequency oscillatory ventilation and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to compare each type of ventilation according to the machine how they work, and how you adjust for ventilation and oxygenation, okay? So here we go. When we're talking about high frequency jet, you gotta use two different machines. You gotta use the jet ventilator and you gotta use a conventional ventilator. So the jet ventilator is responsible for the peak inspiratory pressure, okay? The conventional ventilator is responsible for providing a continuous flow and at the FiO2 and the PEEP, all right? So you get the PIP from the jet and the PEEP from the conventional ventilation, okay? The conventional ventilator. So that's a big thing to remember here. How does jet ventilators work? Okay, so that jet ventilator, what it does is, is it delivers rapid, small bursts of gas it's delivered through like a pinch valve in the machine through a very special adapter connected to the ET tube. And so what this really looks like, let me kind of draw this with a really bad picture again. Some of you know this, this is by way of review. That jet ventilator pulses those really fast, small tidal volumes down the airway, but it pulses them down the center of the airway. Okay, and if they're going just down the center of the airway, that means there's room on the outside of the airway. The outside of the airway is how CO2 kind of starts moving out. So with jet ventilation, one of the things to remember is that inspiration is active. Okay, we're pushing that pip in, but exhalation is passive and you have this movement of CO2 out of the airway. Now, with both of these, 
when we're talking about the little bitty super small tidal volumes, we're not even ventilating past dead space, okay? So that's what you have to remember. Very, very fast rates, itty bitty tidal volumes that are less in anatomic dead space. All right, when we're still talking about the jet, if we need to change ventilation, the primary way to do that is to increase the PIP on the jet. Increase PIP increases the tidal volume, blows off CO2, okay? So you're taking a test. Quite honestly, this is the primary way to ventilate, okay? You're changing the PIP. Now, you can use the eye time. If you have a longer eye time, um, then um, you have more time for the gases to exchange. You actually move a little bit more tidal volume. It can blow off CO2. We don't like to use that too much. I mean, it can be used, but if you increase I time, you decrease E time, and so you have to be very, very, very careful about air trapping, okay? And then you could use the respiratory rate, but it is not often used. So PIP is the primary way to ventilate, to adjust ventilation for CO2 removal. When we're oxygenating, so remember PIP, let me just, PIP is controlled by the jet, remember, okay? When we need to adjust for oxygenation, we're gonna change FiO2 and P. That's just like conventional ventilation, right? That's how you change oxygenation, but remember this is controlled by your conventional ventilator. Okay, high frequency oscillatory ventilation. Your oscillator is one machine, and the really cool thing about it being one machine is that the controls on the machine Ventilation is completely separate from oxygenation and the two don't intermingle whatsoever. So it's pretty easy to kind of figure out what you need to adjust, especially from a testing standpoint. Okay, so the machine uses just the oscillator. So it delivers very small tidal volumes around a constant mean airway pressure. This is the main difference between jet ventilation and high frequency oscillatory ventilation. So if you think in um, conventional ventilation, what we do is we have the machine set, we have a PIP and a PEEP, and when we set the rate, the patient cycles between the two. Now, this is what causes lung injury. This is a very harsh way to ventilate. We get barotrauma, volume trauma, adelet trauma with this. Where the oscillator is different is that you will set a mean airway pressure, okay? So this is the mean airway pressure mean airway pressure. And now the patient is, there is a piston or a diaphragm in that oscillator that delivers very small tidal volumes around this mean airway pressure. Very small tidal volumes, very fast rate. So this is called an open form of ventilator. And so you get that mean airway pressure that pops open the alveoli, then you have this little piston that pushes tidal volume in. So you get tidal volume expansion and then it pulls back, you get exhalation, okay? So inspiration is active with the push of that piston or diaphragm, and exhalation is also active as the piston draws back, all right? So that cycles back and forth through there, super, super fast, itty bitty small tidal volumes, all right? So on the oscillator, if we're gonna adjust ventilation, the primary way to do that is the amplitude. Sometimes in the unit, it's not called amplitude, they may call it delta P, the change, in those two pressures from that upper to lower pressure. Um, they may also call it the power. Whether it's amplitude, delta P, or power, what you're really changing is that tidal volume. This is the primary way to adjust ventilation. If you increase amplitude, you essentially increase the tidal volume and you blow off more CO2. All right, now you can, I say that's, Oops, that's the main way. You can use Hertz also. This is not the main way. And here's why it's backwards from conventional ventilation. I'm gonna take this section and I'm gonna draw it a little bit bigger. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna emphasize this mean airway pressure. All right. And when we're talking about changes in that delta P and we're talking the respiratory rate, if the respiratory rate is fast, here's how I want you to think about it. A fast rate, this top part is the tidal volume that's delivered, okay? Now, this is a fast rate. If we slow down that rate, if we decrease the Hertz, 
what we now have is this. See how that's moving much slower? And when we move that slower, do you see how much tidal volume is here now? So when you, <laughs> it's backwards. So when you slow down the rate, you actually deliver more tidal volume, increased tidal volume, decreases CO2, okay? So you can use the amplitude or the hertz. Most commonly though, most commonly, you're going to use the amplitude to do this. Um, you can use the eye time. That's not used very often. Typically that's set at 33%, a one to two ratio, and it stays there. Um, okay, on the oscillator also, if you want to do oxygenation, oxygenation is controlled by that MAP, okay? So you set the MAP so that you have good expansion. How do you know if you have good expansion? Oh, you take a chest x-ray, and the, the ribs on a neonate should be between 7 and, and about 9 ribs. Um, if you're seeing 10 or 11 ribs, you're overexpanded, and you need to come down on your, your MAP. But... Oxygenation is controlled by the MAP, so you get the expansion correct with the MAP, get the, air, the, the lungs open, and then you can adjust FiO2 for there to achieve the oxygenation you want to. So, hope this has helped. See you soon.